first contact with Joshua Pope. Earthlings, how you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. I hope you're doing well. Today is the second day of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish calendar. For those who are unfamiliar with what that means, it is the beginning of a new year. In the Jewish calendar system, it is the seventh month, the month of Tishri. It is the second day of Tishri. Yesterday was Tishri 1. Today is the second day. It is also the second day of Rosh Hashanah, the new year. It is the new year starting in the seventh month because, as we know biblically, the number seven is an important number for God. The time of Rosh Hashanah is a time of remembering the beginning of humankind. Humankind, as we know, it started with Adam and Eve, as far as the biblical stories go. However, ever there are stories and events that have taken place before what we know of as the Bible, where humankind existed. And we see remnants of these stories through the, the uh, archaeological finds of Egypt and other civilizations that are out there. Then we have the civilization of Atlantis, which we talk about. So humankind, as far as we know it, goes back to Adam and Eve. However, I don't believe that is the first and the only that are here. It was just the ones that this particular time cycle we are looking at are dealing with. Let's take a look at our calendar for today. See specifically what we're looking at here. You can see it is the 22nd of September. 22nd of September on the Jewish calendar is the second day of Tishri, and the year on the Jewish calendar is 5778. Okay, it was 5777. It is now changed to 5778. Eight. From an astrological point of view, our sun sign right here is at the very end of Virgo. Virgo being an earth sign, and it's getting ready to go from Virgo on into the next sign over, which is Libra, an air sign. Okay, our moon sign is still in Libra and will continue to be there the rest of this day, but it will make its way out to Scorpio where it will be for the next couple of days. So just a little refresher, just so we know, everything is energy. Energy moves and operates in different ways. We look at energy and we think of it in terms esoterically as fire, water, air, and earth. Fire is the idea of something and our our energy expresses itself fiery as ideas as creativity energy also expresses itself emotionally as water okay it's another type of way in which energy moves and then we have air which is another one of the elements that energy is formed into air could be words and actions tarot cards represent the suit of air by by the symbol of swords. If you took the, take the first letter, letter S away from swords, you're left with words to give you an understanding of what that's about. And finally, you have earth, which is the physical form of something. So you have fire. The ideas are presented. The ideas are then sprinkled with water or emotions. Those emotions then fuel what is going on with those ideas in order to move it forward as some sort of an action spoken as a word perhaps and this combination of ideas emotions and actions mixed together to form something physical the solid formation of what it was that was the original idea and that is how energy is supposed to flow from an idea down into a physical form when we were in a state where we were in a more perfected state than we could think clearly we could go through this manifestation process much quicker than we're able to do at this point in time because we had that clearer assessment we would think something and we could manifest it however in this day and age we have a challenge doing that because of all of the various distractions that are around us keeping us from making a clear thought and seeing that through the people who are very successful in life are successful because they are able to do that now 
The reason I bring up and I talk about the energy is because we move through a field of energy each and every day. If we know what the field of energy that we're moving through is, we can move through a little bit better. We have different ways in which we look at energy. One of the ways we look at them is astrologically. We try to get an understanding of how the planets and the stars might be affecting us. And those lessons from the planets and the stars have been put down and represented by various symbols. Those symbols we can look at through the various symbols of astrology or something like tarot, where you have 22 major symbols representing 22 Hebrew letters or archetypal uh, systems that are at play. And these all relate, again, back to the astrological signs and the elements and the energies and so on. So our sun sign, which represents our conscious mind, has been in the phase of Virgo for the last month. This would be Virgo. Okay, Virgo is the hermit holding the lantern high for others to see. Prior to this, the hermit went into solitude. Okay, went into solitude, became patient all with the intent of learning something so he could bring it forth into the world. And then once it's brought forth, the lantern is held high in order to shine that light for others to see. So the hermit is a teacher providing service to the world. Okay, the hermit is not what one necessarily thinks of. We think of a hermit, sometimes we think of them as a crazy old person, but that person might actually be the wisest because they are gathering the information that they really need to move forward. And then our moon sign is been in air, which is justice. It's all about balancing things out. The actions in our life want to balance themselves out. The energies in life want to balance themselves out. We simply need to get on board with that system because we oftentimes rebel against it because we're not really wanting to have the balance that is expressed. So we all look for this divine justice. Our moon sign is getting ready to change just as our sun sign is getting ready to change. The sun sign is going to be changing to this sign of Libra, which means that our conscious mind is going to be looking and reaching to find this place of balance. And the very first thing we're going to encounter from a moon standpoint is Scorpio. We're going to dive down into that deeper aspect of ourselves in order to see if we can find some real transformation going on there. Okay, and I think that we'll find this very intriguing as I go through the rest of this show because I'm going to bring up some things that are very significant to us. Now in addition to this being Rosh Hashanah and the new moon that just passed, we also have the autumn equinox which is upon us and that is occurring today as we speak. It is not here right at this moment however within a couple of hours 102 p.m. Pacific time so we're talking just four hours away from now until we officially become fall. Okay, until the fall season officially begins. So we've made it through the summer or we are making it through the last moments of the summer. The last moments of the summer indeed. All right, so here we are spending our last day of summer together talking about the events that are in the world, what's going on. Yesterday I told you what I thought was taking place with this administration, with the prophecy that's involved. I let you know that I believe uh, Donald Trump is either playing out the role of Archangel Michael or is actually Mike, Michael himself in the form of Donald Trump. One of those two, but either way, this is what is being expressed into the world until I see anything otherwise. That is what I'm going with. I've believed this for a long time. You can go back to the, the shows over the last year and you can hear me talking about this very thing. So that brings us to where we are today, looking at all of these changes. And some of these changes that are going on are being talked about for events of the 23rd of September, which is tomorrow. So I want to jump over and I want to take a look at September 23rd, see what this is all about. Now you may or may not have heard of September 23rd prophecies. You may have heard of the date September 23rd, date that comes up tomorrow. But there is a number of uh, pieces of information relating to this being a date that has a lot of significance to it. 
one of the things we can see as we look at this particular graph here, it says once in 7,000 years, we have these particular alignments in the sky. Now, there are some alignments that are happening, you know, once in 7,000 years, but the particular alignments, you know, some of these alignments do occur on a regular basis. You know, every year the sun moves around it. Every year the sun goes into Virgo. Every year the sun goes into Leo. Every year the sun and moon go into these particular signs. But sometimes things line up in a little different fashion. A lot of what's going on is relating to Revelation 12. And there appeared great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and being with child, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Okay, this is the phrase that goes along, and let me show you this particular card right here. This is the card of the Empress, and these are why, in my opinion, these Tarot cards are so important, because they simply provide us pictographic symbols to represent different ideas. The idea of revelation is shown right here. Here is the pregnant woman that's about to give birth. She represents Venus. She represents love and imagination. She's pregnant with imagination and creativity. In this particular case of revelation, she's pregnant with the child that is going to bring forth the, the uh, justice that we need in the world. And, of course, this is not wanted by the dragon who is trying to stop her. Let's take a little further look at uh, Revelation 12 because there's some important significance to that. Let me get over here. Revelation 12. Okay. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, just like the picture I showed you. And she being with child, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and seven, ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And then here in the seventh line, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. And prevailed not, neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before God night and day, day and night. And they overcometh him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and the love, not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that his time is short. But when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he per persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, and to the woman were given two wings of a great angel, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The dragon was worth wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus Christ. So here we have within here another story about Archangel Michael. 
who I've been talking about, and I believe we are watching battle out this battle in our real life here on Earth against the multi-headed beast of the deep state, the media, those who are standing in the way of obstruction. Now, I know it's very easy to look at what's going on in life and get caught up politically and say that I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. I know you may look at me with my red hat and say, that guy is a Republican. Well, you'd be incorrect about that. I voted for Trump. I had to, you know, be Republican in order to vote for him in the primary, but I've always been independent, and I believe that is the way to go. The independent is walking the middle path. But I've also studied New World Order. I've also studied media manipulation. I've spent you know, the last 25 years of my life studying such things. So when I see Donald Trump and I understand what I understand about the New World Order, I realize that he is nothing at all like what the New World Order agenda is about. I don't think America realized how close we came to absolute disaster. If you look at how our country was being dismantled, and it was being dismantled, and right now some of the biggest cases of treason are happening in America, when Americans truly understand, we will find out that we were this close from not being a country anymore. Because had Hillary gotten into office, continuing to go forward with this agenda, the various policies and things that Donald Trump has stopped and has protected us from, we wouldn't have any of those things in place. We'd be in a different situation. So we have no idea on a whole, as Americans, how close we came to absolute destruction. But perhaps over time we'll start to pay a little bit more attention to that. Now, I wanted to bring up here this image here because this is something that to me and I was just talking about the hat this is something to me that's important you see this I'm going to read this to you I adapted this from a, a uh, movie quote this is my hat there are many like it but this one is mine my hat bears my mission statement it is my life I must master it as I master my life without me my hat is useless Without my hat, I am useless. I must honor my hat's message. I must be greater than my enemy who is trying to kill me. I must stop him before he stops me. I will. My hat and I know what counts in war is not the snowflakes that we trigger, the memes we create, nor the red pills we drop. We know that it is our MAGA that counts. We shall release our MAGA. My hat is human even as I because it is my life. Thus I wear it as a brother. I will learn its weaknesses, its strengths, its slogan, and its message. I will keep my hat clean and ready, even as I am clean and ready. We will become one part of each other. We will. Before God, I swear this creed, my hat and I are defenders of my country. We are the masters of our enemy. We are the saviors of my life. So be it until the victory is America's and there is no enemy but peace. Now, I know you may think it's a silly little thing, but to me, this is no longer a political statement. This is a mission statement now. How to make America great again. Some people say, oh, America's never been great, but it was. And usually the people who are saying that are those who haven't been alive more than 20, maybe even 30 years. But there were times when Americans used to be able to fly without having to get groped by TSA in order to do so. There were times Americans could go out and didn't need to worry that they were going to get attacked in the streets by someone with some sort of political agenda. There were times when race relations were far better than they are. There were many, many times in America that we as people were much better than we are right now. We've fallen a long way and we've justified this falling. We've justified our bad behavior. Now this hat may not be anything more than a hat, but it has a phrase that I think we've all come to love and understand that we are all America. It's not just Donald Trump. 
it's not President Trump, but we are all the Americans that are here in this country that are making America again. We are the ones who are responsible. He is simply the one who is encouraging us and challenging us to be the greatness that we can be. Okay, now let me bring up a few other pieces here in regards to September 23rd because there's a number of other we'll call them prophecies or what have you lists this is a really good list that was created about all different types of uh, synchronicities and anniversaries that are taking place on this day so we have the exact day is Feast of Trumpets which is 21st and 22nd so it's not exactly on the Feast of Trumpets but it's pretty darn close because you know close enough 70 years from 1947 the birth of Israel it's the 50th anniversary of the year of Jubilee from Jerusalem it's the 500th anniversary of the Reformation usually considered to have started in by Luther in 1517 it's the 120th Jubilee from Adam it's the 70th Jubilee since Exodus the 100th anniversary of Balfour Declaration, the official act to give Jews the return of land. It marks the year, well this was last year, marks 577 of the Jewish calendar, which actually 5778. Uh, 726 days from the last blood moon, which was September 28, 2015 through now. Uh, the International Day of Peace in the United Nations was on the 21st. We've heard President Trump speaking about this. The August eclipse occurs exactly 33 days before Revelation 12. Seven years later, there'll be another eclipse to form an X over the United States. On uh, President's first day in office, he was 70 years, seven months, seven days. He was inaugurated on 1-2017 with 77 electoral votes. Okay, and then finally, as we know, the Feast of Trumpets. So, this list is not exhaustive by any means. Perhaps it is, but it is a list of things that are synchronicities on the date 23rd tomorrow. What does this mean to us? Well, it could mean that there's a significance for Jerusalem, for Israel. There could be something very important there that is occurring. One of the things that was mentioned a couple of times was this term jubilee. A jubilee year is the year at the end of seven cycles or of Shemitah, sabbatical years, and according to biblical regulations, had a special impact on the ownership and the management of the land in the land of Israel. There was some debate over whether it was the 49th year, the last year, or whether it was the following, the 50th year. Jubilee deals largely with land, property, property rights. According to Leviticus, slaves and prisoners would be freed, debts would be forgiven, and the mercies of God would be particularly manifest. So, Jubilees is an important time of celebration, and it was mentioned several different times already. So, we see these anniversary dates being played out. Uh, the Reformation, Protestant Reformation, was another one that was mentioned in there, an anniversary date of this particular event. Uh, what else we have? The Shemitah is the Sabbath year, literally called the Sabbatical year, is the seventh year of the seven-year agricultural cycle mandated by the Torah for the land of Israel and still observed in contemporary Judaism. So again, we see the number seven and the importance of the number seven. We have these cycles in every seventh year, because remember in the Bible, in Genesis, it says on the seventh day God rested. Therefore, in these cycles of seven, that seventh day is always a mirrored reflection of that individual seventh day. So you have the seventh year out of a seven-year cycle would be like the seventh day of a seven-day cycle. Okay, so just important moments in time. And, of course, I brought up some information on the Balfour Declaration. It was a British public statement issued during World War I announcing support for the establishment of a Jewish national home in Palestine. Okay. 
And so many different events taking place, uh, many different anniversaries that are coinciding this year. So again, that could bring some significance for what's going on. And then finally here, if you look, I've brought up a list here, September 23rd, Prophecy. I go put this in over at Bing. I use Bing as much as possible or DuckDuckGo as opposed to Google. Google's way too involved in censorship, so I'm trying to step away from them as much as possible. So you can see just by typing in September 23rd Prophecy, you get a lot of information. Here's one of these particular articles. Uh, September 23rd this year is set to mark the beginning of the apocalypse, according to several conspiracy theorists and doom mongers. The rapture set out in the book of Revelation will see worthy Christians lifted into heaven by Jesus, while those remaining will be left to face the end of the world. Now an apocalyptic theory known as Revelation 12 sign predicts the rapture will soon be fulfilled with the appearance of a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and the crown of 12 stars on her head. Okay, so that's what we're reading about there. And finally, here's a link to a video. If you've not heard any of this videos by this man, Trey Smith, you should definitely check out his videos. Very, very well worth it. Uh, tremendous research and prophecy that he has really unfolded throughout the course of what he's been doing. Very, very good stuff. In this particular videos, he's really breaking down in this one all about September 23rd, the various uh, aspects, things that I talked about, but he gets into some other detail about things. He has uh, some other prophecies there you might really want to get into and, and check out. Uh, you definitely might want to check out some of his stuff. He has brought forth a lot of information about Kim Clement, who I was talking about yesterday and showing you all about. So definitely a lot of significance to that indeed. A lot of significance. So that kind of brings us to a point of here we are now. And what do we do with all of this? Are those thinking the world's going to end? We're seeing uh, political situations unfolding, which give us concern what's going on in the world. We see battles amongst human beings of different colors battling over each other for the color of one's skin. We see propaganda battles going on. So many things taking place. And I don't think anybody out there would deny the amount of information we are all having to deal with on a daily basis. The question is, how well are we able to put this information together? How well are we able to process it? And the better we're able to process it, the better we're able to get through these times. It's really that simple. It's not difficult, but we have to make sure we're getting right information. If we get bad information, then we make bad decisions. Case in point, if you're a liberal, I could understand why you might be so angry because you spent the last year since President Trump decided to run for office listening to a media telling you that Hillary had 98% chance of winning. You spent an entire election cycle hearing that. At the end of the cycle, when the election happened, the results did not come up to what you were told. But instead of putting two and two together to figure out that you were lied to, you're continuing to listen to the same media that lied to you, 60. who is now telling you other lies. So I could understand your frustration. My friends, we have to come together as human beings. It's the only way we're going to survive. We have to stop fighting with each other, and we have to start loving each other more. It's the only solution to this problem. Otherwise, what are we going to do? Go in the streets and just kill each other off? I don't think that's a very viable solution. I don't think it's what God has in mind for us. So let's spend some time really contemplating how we could make America better, how we could make life better, how we could express God better into the world each and every day. All right? That's it. If you like the show, please uh, subscribe. Please, any comments you have are welcome. The website is firstcontactradio.com. You can find me uh, online at Twitter, First Contact Now, or at Facebook. 
Have yourselves an awesome weekend. Enjoy whatever is going to happen. I'll be back next week, and we'll continue on from there. I love you. Keep loving each other. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.